Well today we are in the garden and we are planting out our uh, 2022 sugar beet tubers that uh, we grew last year, stored over the winter, so that we can get some seed. And what you're going to see in this video can be applied to any kind of beet because uh, they're all very very similar even though they all have different uh, production qualities. And the whole point of this is if you're trying to be sustainable, learning how, learning the skills you need to uh, propagate vegetables of whatever kind they are is an important thing. So you'll see it uses a fair bit of space, but uh, we feel this is a well worthwhile experiment and we're certainly hoping it's gonna work out really, really, really well. Well, today we are digging through our stored sugar beets because we need to get our uh, beet roots that we need for seed saving planted before we run out of time and don't get any seeds. Before we can do that, we have to dig out the good roots from our storage bins. Well, I'm being kind of careful as I'm digging these out of here, but uh, you can see they stored quite well. It's a bit of a smaller one. We were uh, kind of smart in one sense, maybe not in another. We put the biggest ones at the bottom because uh, we didn't want them squishing everything else. Well, as I'm digging these out, we're aiming ideally for at least 20 of these because they're a big time outcrossing plant. So you can do it with as little as five, but you may not be able to do it indefinitely that way. So we're hoping that we get close to 20 decent individuals. This one here is actually uh, not the biggest by any means, but one that I would say is a pretty good shape. It's stored through the uh, winter pretty well. Now, uh, you basically like anything else. You want to select ones that are fairly representative of what you want. So in the case of the sugar beets, we want pretty good sized ones and we want them with a relatively nice sort of taproot-y kind of shape to them. And we don't want ones with multiple uh, root legs and all that sort of thing. So this is a reasonable one, uh, but we're going to see if we can, like I say, get about 20 of these and uh, then we're going to take them outside and plant. So here's our big one as you can see by the size of my hand coming out of storage. It's got a little bit of growth on it but this one is going to definitely go for seed even though on the end it's a little more blunted than we'd probably like. It's got some pretty good size to it so it's going in the bucket to go out. These are the other ones that have made the cut so far. Well we are now outside and uh, we did manage to find 20 individual uh, roots, beet roots, that we figured would be good enough to replant for potential seed. Now beets are a biannual and unfortunately for the most part where we are they won't survive outside. We've done some experimenting with that and uh, Swiss chard and they don't quite tolerate our weather. So they do have to be stored inside which is where this extra step comes in. They're also a really long-term uh, seed producer because uh, they can take from transplant today of the of the root, they can take uh, between 130 and 160 days before you actually get the seed harvested. Now, we did some calculation that should put us kind of around the 22nd or 23rd of October, which should be okay because obviously beets are a bit more cold tolerant than uh, some vegetables. But uh, here we go, the start of our sort of experiment uh, getting beets to go to seed. So here's the plot that uh, we're planning to put them. Hopefully we can fit all of them in here. If not, we'll uh, get creative and figure something out. Uh, we basically chose this area because we figured why not. It gets uh, good moisture, good sun because they, they do require a fair bit of sun and it's kind of out of the way so these are going to get pretty large <laughs> when they go to seed with their seed stock and what have you. The recommended spacing distance for these for seed is about two feet apart. I suspect that's because the plant can actually become a bit of a monster in its uh, second year of life. So we're going to see if we can uh, get all 20 of them in this space. So we got about three quarters of them in. It's not uh, too hard of a task. It's a little labor intensive because you have to dig a hole for each two or uh, I keep wanting to call them tubers but each root. And uh, I'll show you here. You don't want to bury them too deep. You can see this one had quite a bit of growth above ground last year, but uh, we're probably going to bury it to about where my hands are, like that. So, really simple. Just going to put it in the hole, and back fill around it. And 
<laughs> That's about as complicated as it gets. And we're just going to keep repeating until they're all done. We managed to fit them all in. So there are 20 sugar beets in the ground ready for uh, producing some seed okay. in uh, 2022. Well, we're all done planting. And uh, although this seems like quite a bit of space allocated to something that's not going to produce us any direct food, it's still valuable because it, from a sustainability perspective, if you know how or you can propagate the plants that you grow, that's a huge step towards uh, some independence. And beets are an interesting one because they can be a mega producer. Now, we hadn't said this earlier in the video, but beets are a bit problematic because they're very, very open pollinated. The separation distances are crazy. So for us, we can only go one type of beet per year to go to seed without crossing. And in the case of the sugar beets versus like the Detroit Reds and some of the, the other beet varieties, the crossing would be detrimental because we would lose likely some of that uh, specific qualities in this case the high sugar content so it's worthwhile uh, for us knowing how to do this so stay tuned because uh, we'll see how this goes over uh, 2022. So you know I said it before just a brief reminder it's recommended that your uh, your beet roots go two feet apart for uh, seed production you could probably do it in a row because it's uh, quite wind the pollen travels quite a bit through the wind uh, one thing, and this we do not have any experience with, but in our various research that we've been doing, it does recommend that you minimize the amount of uh, watering you do on the crown. And I imagine that's to do with water sort of sitting and pooling on the crown where you've got the growing tip. So I'm going to water around these. We, uh, we're in a bit of a rush to get them in. It doesn't look like much, but we're supposed to get a fair bit of rain tomorrow. So we... Uh, Basically because they're still kind of dormant. We uh, wanted to get them in before we got a lot of moisture and uh, we succeeded.